In this tutorial, I demonstrate a Revit feature that is super easy to use and will increase your annotation efficiency. I am, of course, speaking about Plan Notes. That's coming up straight after this. Welcome to Power Surge, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content. This is a demolition plan example. And like this example, most demolition plans are composed of several text notes and a typed legend, just like this. Now, there is nothing wrong with this. However, I do find with so many expansive notes added, the drawing becomes difficult to read. Let's look at an alternative. In this alternative example, I have composed the same plan, but this time using what Revit calls a plan note and its corresponding note block schedule. Once you are accustomed to using plan notes, you will never want to use anything else. Plan notes are sometimes confused with keynotes, but unlike keynotes, the advantage of a plan note is that you don't need external text files. Plan notes are so easy to use. The premise is that you use an identification system and these keys correspond to notes in an automated schedule known as a note block. As I edit the schedule, watch as I highlight item 3 in the model. I can then toggle the visibility parameter to reveal the context. When combined with a note block, plan notes are super efficient. Watch the schedule update as I remove note 3 and then also delete note 2. But it gets better. Watch as I create a new note. I start by copying an existing entry and update the reference number. Then I turn on the associated text and click in to edit. I now have an instantly updated legend. And because most demolition plans have similar annotations, I have these added into my template, allowing for demolition plans to be noted up in no time at all. Let's now unpack how this annotation system was made. First, start with a generic annotation and then add labels to host the parameters that drive the system. For example, this label uses this parametric data, specifically the multi-line text parameter. Also, add a visibility parameter to hide and unhide the multi-line description text. Remember to then associate the visibility parameter with the specific label that you want to turn on and off. Next, we focus on the identifier. Again, create an associated label and parameter. In the family types catalog, you can see all of the included parameters. I also like to include a category parameter. The advantage of this is the ability to retain instance parameter data. For example, I can create a callout view with a separate schedule, or I can create other demolition plans, such as ceiling and floor finish demolition plans with their own note blocks. And here are the parameters in the project file. Creating a note block schedule is just as easy. From the view tab, find the schedule button, then find note block. And then it's just like managing a standard schedule. Add the parameters into the schedule like this. Next, use the category parameter to filter, remembering that these can be used for different types of plans such as different types of demolition plants, like RCP demo and floor finish demo. Next, use the number parameters to sort by and ensure to uncheck 
itemize every instance. And then define the formatting where you can check the hidden field button for the category parameter. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you found it useful and that you learned something new. If you did, kindly subscribe and remember to comment and like this video also. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.